Good morning, Falcons. Welcome back to another show. Today we have sports, entertainment, announcements, weather, and a few news stories. That's right, and Falcon TV starts, starts right, right now. now. Oh my gosh, I heard that us 8th graders get to pick our classes soon. Really? It felt like just two weeks ago that we chose high school. I know. I think I'm going to join like the tennis team and the dance team. It's going to be so much fun. Well, say it seems fun. I've got to college back. It's obviously the better. Nope. We are not going to talk about this again. Fine. Dylan Michael, take it away. Hello, Falcons. Welcome back to the sports update. Before we start talking all about musty matches from across the sports world, we have an announcement from Mr. Traeger. Track and field season here at AOMS is starting March 11th. If you are interested in joining, please see Mr. Traeger next week during PE, and he'll give you the information. Practices will be held on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. I'm definitely going to look into that. Now let's start with the NBA. On Sunday, the Clippers play the Timberwolves at 12.30, and the Cavaliers play the Knicks at 4 p.m. Also on Sunday, the Thunder and Suns face off at 6.30. Looks like we have a lot to look forward to this weekend. Last week, the Padres played the Dodgers, with the Dodgers coming out victorious with a score of 4-1. to one. Now let's head to the pitch for some soccer news. Last Sunday, Liverpool's Virgil van Dijk scored a corner header in the 118th minute of extra time to defeat Chelsea in the Carabao Cup final. Chelsea held their own throughout the match, although Liverpool were playing all their rookies because their starters were injured. Can't believe we lost to a bunch of teenagers. Hopefully we can place top seven in the table at least. Now moving away from the Carabao Cup, Man United and Man City face off in a Manchester Derby Sunday at 7.30 on USA Network and Peacock. That's sure to be an amazing matchup. Now back to the anchors. I know I don't understand sports that much, but, but I'm actually in one and I'm pretty good. Really? What is the mystery sport that you're so good at? Me and my friends are in a competition to see who can read the most books in a month. Oh, um, that sounds really sporty. Yeah, I go to the library, like, every day. It's Reader's Paradise. That's actually the name of Elijah's piece. Really? Let's go check it out. Many places in Carlsbad bring their own special touch to the community. The flower fields with their amazing colors, Legoland with fun attractions, and of course, our beautiful beaches. However, none do this better than the Carlsbad Library a beautiful building containing endless stories and little adventures with each page. We met with a librarian to get to know exactly what makes the Carlsbad Library so special. The very first semblances of the Carlsbad Library was in 1916 in a little storefront. The first original building was in 1967 on Carlsbad Village Drive. The first librarian at the time was Georgina Cole, who that branch now is named after. And then this building was built and opened in September of 1999. So we've been here almost 26 years. The Carlsbad Library offers more than just books. It is a gathering place for people. Um, when it comes when uh, helping out with teens, you know, it's a safe spot for them. You know, it's a safe place, uh, considering that we welcome everybody. Um, and it's also a place where you can be creative, where you can be yourself. The Carlsbad Library is unique in many different ways. The biggest thing, at least at this facility, is the Cultural Arts Department. The Georgina Cole Library on Carlsbad Village Drive has um, the entire second floor is the second largest genealogy department in the state of California. And then at the Library Learning Center, their entire top floor is devoted to adult literacy, teaching adults not only to read, but also computer literacy. Whether it's checking out a book, studying for a test, or so much more, there's no better location than the Carlsbad Library to satisfy you. With camera operator Elijah Franklin, this is Dylan Castle reporting for Falcon TV. I sure do love books. I'm glad you do, Casper. I lied. I haven't read a book willingly since fifth grade. I can tell. But you don't need to read books to be smart. I know. I'm already the best. Okay. Let's just go to Emmett with Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Name a gas humans need to live. What else? Oxygen. Yeah. Okay, what's the area of a triangle with a base of four inches and a height of four inches? Uh, eight. Yeah, good job. Who was the third president? Thomas Jefferson. How'd you know that? I don't know. You don't know? Guest. Okay, who was the second president? 
George Washington. If you have a square backyard that's 10 feet by 10 feet, what's the area? A hundred. Name a type of metal. Silver well. Can you name the three types of rocks? No. Can you name one of them? Stone. Brick. Good morning, Falcons. Welcome back to Entertainment. I can't believe it's already March. Yep, yesterday was also February 29th, which only happens once every four years. It was also National Toast Day. Where do you get this information from? I have my ways. Let's talk about some movies. The Jungle Bunch Operation Meltdown is officially in theaters. Yep, and the Wonka movie along with the Argyle is still here to watch. Good for those who haven't seen them yet. I think I'll try and watch those. I'm also sure that Teenage Kraken is officially on Netflix. I'm really excited to watch that. Me too. Let's talk about a few popular movies on Netflix. The Super Mario Bros. is top 10. So is the Minions movie. The Tom and Jerry movie along with Leo are both really popular. So is the Trolls movie. Speaking of trolls, Justin Timberlake's new song, Drown, is out now to listen. I heard it's really good. His other new song, Selfish, was also newly released. Yep, reminder to anyone, Justin Timberlake's new album, Everything I Thought It Was, comes out on March 15th. I'm really excited for that. Me too. I wonder how well I'll know the songs. I'm usually able to know the lyrics to the song pretty well. Let's see how well you guys do with Courtney's Game of Finished Lyrics. Finish the song. It's all she ever wants is begging on her knees to be popular. Bad dream to be popular. Kill anyone to be popular. Finish the song. We're gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. Um, cause I wait, how does it go again? Finish the song. When I say I want it that way, tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why ain't nothing but a <laughs> Hey, finish the song. Sometimes you gotta stay. Welcome to my house. Yes. Okay, finish the song. Your girlfriend, she's upset. She's going off about something that you said. She doesn't get your humor like I do. Yes, good job. You guys' voices are pretty good. I'm glad Courtney didn't have to film in the rain. Yeah, speaking of it, it hasn't done that in a while. Thank goodness. Let's go to Gunner and Zach for the weather. Welcome back to your weekly weather report. Next week remains in the low 60s with lows in the high 40s. Next week we'll also have slight rain showers. Stop lying, it'll be partly cloudy. Anyway, surfers should expect waves to be 2-3 to three feet high. Wind speeds will be pointing west at 8-10 to 10 miles an hour. Very interesting. That's it for the weather, Falcons. Now back to the anchor. I'm glad the weather will be nice next week. I'm planning on going hiking. What? Really? Where? There are like no good spots around here. Yeah, Leo Carrillo Ranch has a huge trail that you can go through. Oh yeah, I remember visiting there in fourth grade. Yep, we should totally go. No. Alright, Olivia, Maddie, and Courtney have a piece on it. The Carlsbad City has many departments to keep it up and running. One of them is the Historical Department. The Historical Department keeps Leo Carrillo up and running and preserves the history of the Hollywood actor, author, and poet Antonio Lopato Carrillo and his family. Let's go explore. There's a lot of history behind Leo Carrillo Ranch. Leo Carrillo Ranch um, 
his, a history that goes way back in time, all the way back to the Payomkawichim or Luiseno, which were the first uh, inhabitants that we know of in this area. Uh, after that, there were some early homesteaders named the Kellys who were here. And then Leo Carrillo, who's probably our most famous person to live here, uh, who was a Hollywood actor back in like the 30s and 40s, and then had a TV show in the 1950s, bought the ranch in 1937 and made it look kind of like it does today. Leo Carrillo is not only used for tours, but other things as well. I think that Leo Carrillo's hacienda or house was really, is considered the jewel in the crown out here. That's the thing that most people want to see the most. It was his family's vacation getaway. It has three bedrooms and a big um, kitchen and dining room sala area. And it's just uh, has a lovely courtyard as well and pretty grounds around it. That's where most of our weddings take place as well. So not just visitors like it, but brides and grooms like to come out um, and have their ceremonies out here as well. Working here for Sarah Kelly has many benefits. The ranch is just beautiful. So it's a lovely place to come every morning. And I think that parks like this attract a really nice group of people as well. So not only are my coworkers just lovely, fun people to work with, but uh, the park itself is so beautiful and the guests that come are really nice as well. So I really think I, I, every morning I feel lucky to come to work here. All in all, if you're looking for a place to step back in time and engage yourself in history, Leo Curio is the perfect destination. This fascinating location offers a unique glimpse into the past, allowing visitors to experience what life is truly like in a different era. With its rich cultural heritage and beautifully preferred architecture, Leo Curio is a must-see for anyone who wants to explore the past in a fun and engaging way. This has been Madeline Harrison reporting for Falcon News with camera operator Olivia Sanchez and Courtney Clements. Yeah, I guess that was cool. I know. I actually heard about it in last year's weekly announcements. That's cool. Speaking of announcements, let's go to Emmett. Happy Friday, Falcons. I'm Emmett with your weekly announcements. At 2.45 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there will be a babysitting class in the library. You can watch the next Willy Wonka Jr. show next week on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays at the Carlsbad Cultural Arts Center. The time to order a yearbook is fast approaching. You can order one at yearbookordercenter.com and enter the code 6853. Black Student Union meetings will be hosted every Tuesday during brunch in Mr. Maggie's room, 1604. You have five weeks left to turn in the permission slip and contribution for the 8th grade Knott's Berry Farm trip. Students cannot be added to the trip after the deadline March 29, 2024. It's time for the March Madness Book League again. Today is the last day to nominate your favorite books to compete in March. You can find the link in your advisory classrooms and on the library page on the AOMS website. Check back each week to vote and see the winners. Now to Adriana with the ASP update. Thanks, Emmett. Welcome to your ASB update. I'm Adriana, and here I have Cooper and Preston. So, what is ASBF planned for us this week? On Friday, March 1st, we have the March birthday treats. At brunch, students will be able to get a treat for having a birthday in the month of March. Do you have anything else? Yes. On March 7th through the 9th, AOMS Drama presents Willy Wonka. Come see Willy Wonka at the CAC at 7 p.m. The show on the 9th will have a 2 p.m. matinee showing. Buy tickets on the web store. Thanks, ASB, for filling us in. Now back to Ashley and Casper. Thanks, Adriana. That's it for this show, Falcons. We'll see you next time on, on Falcon, Falcon TV. TV.